Bedford report. Christine, lovely to see you. Nice to see you too. Good morning, everyone. <coughs> uh, first up, as we've done a bit of a report on Takapunaki that was asked for at um, our last presentation. So, really, just a bit about the significance um, of Takapunaki. Um, is that um, it was a major trading post um, in the 19th century, and um, or major trading village, I should say. And then in the 1830s, many of the Naitahu people were massacred there. So um, in response to that, the British government appointed an official resident to discourage any other further, further atrocities. This, <coughs> this was the first formal intervention by Britain in New Zealand and led to the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, which I think is really quite significant. Um, surviving Ngāi Tahu considered Takapaniki to be the tapu, uh, tapu area and resettled at Ōnuku, and Ōnuku means at a distance. At Ōnuku, the memory of these events kept alive, creating a strong connection between the land and Takapaniki and the Runanga. So, the National Reserve status, um, because of Takapaniki's significance, the Banks Financial District Council asked for National Reserve's status to be sought. This is fully supported by Ornuku Runanga, and they did a wonderful presentation to the board not so long ago. Um, there are only other th three other National Reserves in the community, I'm sorry, in the country. A management plan for Takapuniki is now up for consultation, which is a prerequisite for the area to be considered as a national reserve. An application to the Minister of Conservation will be made when the Council adopts a management plan. So I don't know if that satisfies um, that request for more information on that. Mm. But um, that's where that's at. Our next item is Freedom Campaign. Um, it's good to see that um, the summer season started really early, which was back in October. Um, but from the locals are reporting that they're seeing a lot of uh, campaign illegally over, mainly in the Akarawa district and in the peninsula where um, <coughs> people can just hide in little areas over there. So um, now that summer's here, there's a growing concern and frustration building that the bylaw hasn't been enforced. Um, to legally issue an infringement, a camper must be found asleep in a vehicle before 6am. Obviously, this is very hard for staff. Um, they would have to leave early to get over to that side of the peninsula. <coughs> um, and there's all sorts of things, um, criteria. We've had two deputations, one at our board and one at board chairs from Tracy Weston. Um, and really, it is quite difficult to catch these people out. So, from what the residents are seeing and what's been enforced, there's a great, like I say, there's a growing frustration. So, um, the board strongly supports the LTP funding for additional compliance staff, so the council can effectively and proactively enforce the bylaw. Um, the next is the uh, eco burial site, um, which I was um, had the pleasure of being part of. So, there's a photo up there of Eric. Ian Thornton and myself at the opening. Um, this has been 10 years in the making and it's really just been um, really a real partnership between the Diamond Harbour community and council staff to make this happen. Uh, there was a growing concern from Diamond Harbour residents that there was not enough space in the cemetery over there for um, people to be buried so they looked at um, how they could go about um, creating an eco-burial site. Um, it's in a wonderful location and the whole, um, well, really, you, there's a bit on Newsline um, that was put up on the 21st of November that explains a lot about it, but just the whole um, notion of the eco burial site, I think it's going to catch on. I've had lots of people asking me about it, so um, just well done to that community and to Eric Banks in particular that really helped with that project. And um, I believe Council is now investigating other possible eco burial sites in the city. Um, just the last 
excuse my voice, <coughs> uh, item is just acknowledging um, Akarawa was awarded Kiwi's Choice for um, one of the favourite spots in New Zealand, which they're really thrilled about. Um, and why wouldn't it be? It's such a beautiful place. Uh, with this, though, and what I said about the Freedom Campaign, there is um, some concerns from community board members um, from over that way that are a bit concerned um, because um, they're busy now um, and it's just going to grow over the Christmas period. So they are really concerned about resourcing over there and you know where the staff are going to be seeing um, to be monitoring the situation. So I thought I'll just add that, but that there is a bit of concern. Um, so the visitors, um, coupled with the cruise ships, um, mm. well, I heard that um, Andrew Hensley was over there looking at the um, pedestrian traffic and he reckons that one of the crossings there was busier than any crossing in the city, so it's just growing all the time. So there is a bit of concern. But at the same time, I don't want to take away from the fact that it was awarded the Kiwi's Choice, so it was really great. I think it won the destination choice for the passengers on the cruise liners as well. Yeah, so it's doing, <laughs> doing very well. Yeah, it's a gorgeous place. Yes. Uh, Andrew, you'd like to move this, obviously. Yep, sure. yep. And somebody would like to second it. Aaron? Um, yep, I um, was just going to get to that. But was there anything that you wanted to kind of add first, Andrew? Um, I would probably just reiterate the comments that have been made um, around freedom camping. We are at the beginning of the summer season, the season which has probably started earlier than it sometimes does. It's great that people are wanting to visit the peninsula and Akaroa, and I'm very aware of concerns in the community. And I get a number of photos that land in my inbox almost on a daily basis of, of camping activity on the peninsula. Um, we had a presentation from staff to the board and one of the things that was apparent from that presentation was that whilst community members are concerned and whilst there are you know, regular contact with community board members and it comes up in conversation, we're not getting a lot of um, requests for enforcement action through the council system and we're not getting a lot of complaints about what community members are saying is illegal freedom camping um, reported to us formally. So whilst our enforcement team are doing what they can within current resources to make sure that this is, is monitored and that enforcement action takes place. It's really helpful if community members are aware in any part of the city of activity that needs attention if that is reported to council by calling the call centre on 9418999 um, so that that can first of all be recorded as a complaint and an incident but secondly allows us to get enforcement action in place as soon as possible. Um, receiving a photo two days later um, really removes the opportunity for us to do anything about it. Getting a phone call at the time that the activity is taking place does allow us an opportunity to respond and allows um, accounting of that incident as we're planning how we do enforcement across this summer and in future. Thank you. Um, Yanni? Uh, thank you very much for the um, more extensive information on Takapuniki. I just wanted to check, does your board have delegated authority for the reserve management plan? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, and do you have a, t I know you've put the time frame for consultation. Um, do you have a kind of time frame for a decision on that? It you says, well, if you go to the website, it says consultation 11 October 15 December 2017. So that closes next week. Yeah. Submitters notified of hearing January 2018. Hearing plan for February uh, 2018, misspelt on the website, just saying. And council decision April 2018. That's right. Yeah. That's right. So is it going to come reported come through the community board to council for a decision? Yeah, it will do. Hmm. I think it's a community board delegation, but I think this is one that should come back through council. Right. I'm it just mindful that step. when we did well, the... Well, if you read the website, it says a report Sorry. from the hearings panel together with the revised reserve management plan will be presented to council to be adopted. Right. Once the management plan has been adopted by council, staff will work with Ornuku Runanga to start implementing the agreed outcomes of the management plan. Yeah, so so just but just the reason I raised that is previously when we had the hearing into... Um, uh, I think it was the registration, um, uh, the historic reserve under the Reserves Act. We had a joint council community board hearings panel, oh, okay. and I was just wondering if it is coming back to council whether there was any consideration to having 
uh, you know, a local or a city councillor on the hearings panel to hear the submissions. But, it, but it's specifically designed to um, seek national reserve status, mm. and this is the first step towards that. I, I understand all that. So, so the hearing panel that's set up to hear the submissions um, is currently just consisting of several community board members. We haven't got the detail of that. Okay. No, not you haven't step by step. But presumably you'll be on it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'd say Andrew definitely would be. <laughs> okay. Um, and the second thing I was just wondering if maybe at some stage when we meet with the Minister of Conservation, we, we might like to think about briefing around this. Yep. Sure. Cool. Thank you. But thank you for the work you're doing on it. And thank you I for know, it's, um, yeah. Ray, thank you. It might be painful. Just on the freedom camping thing, has there been any work done on um, having more campsites available for freedom campus style? So basically dock sites with very basic facilities yes. on the peninsula? Mm -hmm. uh, no, not, not at this point. Um, I mean, that might solve the problem. We're going to spend a lot of money on enforcing something which is very difficult to enforce. But actually, if we say, hey, there's 10 fantastic dock sites around the peninsula, which are basically five bucks a night, have some either basic rubbish facilities or basic toilets, you know, you'll get them to go there. But at the moment, they'll just go to the they same are places. All, they're all on the camper, um, what's it called? The camper, 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 yeah. camper mate. So they, they, they have all the dock sites recorded. The trouble is that if we add to those, then people just flock to them in droves, which was our experience in Christchurch. Yeah, but and, we'd rather than going to places us. where we've got the facilities. I mean, it's a lot cheaper to manage. I mean, people are always going to seek out places to go that are kind of off the beaten track. Yeah, no, I, I, I mean, I totally get that, but uh, it's, a, it's a nationwide issue that really does need to be resolved nationally. It's ridiculous saying that there should be one set of rules in this area and then you cross an invisible boundary and all of a sudden you're governed by another whole set of rules. It's not very friendly for visitors to understand what the rules are at any particular site. But the challenges of enforcement are, well, they're significant across, across the country. That's why we've always supported a nationwide approach and if not nationwide, South Island wide. Yeah, okay. But I think we could do more work about the demand side, actually what are people looking for, and let's yeah. try and actually provide that for not them. Paying. Well, I don't think that's not the, you, you, that's not the feedback I get. People well want cheap, that. but you know, so like, there's no yeah. not paying and five bucks. You yeah, know. you have no idea um, if you well, talk. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to say that some of the feedback that we've had, that a lot of it is young people that are coming here from overseas that are opting to Freedom Camp illegally, so they've got more funds to spend on activities. Yeah. So, um, I don't know how you'd... I mean, that's why you have your carrot and a stick. You have a big fine or a small payment. Yes, but, yeah, anyway, th yeah. there's a lot of work to be so, um, going on in relation to freedom camping, and thank you for alerting us to it. No, <laughs> you're welcome. So, I shall put the motion. All those in favour say aye. aye. Those opposed say no. That's carried. Thank you.